purchase your tracks today. picture Frankenstein. In 1935, horror turned to terror with the bride of Frankenstein. In 1990, the makers of Basket Case and Brain Damage bring you... Want a date? <laughs> Frankenhooker. Jeffrey Franken has a plan. I just want to bring him back. He has the ingenuity. I need female body parts. He has everything he needs, except the raw materials. Just hold still. Onion. Jeffrey's creation is alive. Looking for some action? Oh, yeah. She's sexy. On a date, you going out? I'm on my way home, but uh, thanks anyway. I, uh... And she's so jerked to please. Listen, I'm looking for a very tall, attractive woman. She's purple. She's got fresh bars on her. She's in the bar. Now, a motion picture like no other. <laughs> A tender story of love and romance. One A gripping tale of lust and revenge. <laughs> Frank and Hogan. Incredible. Some assembly may be required. Elizabeth. Vic. Vic. Tom. 
No, you're mine. No. You're mine. Uh, uh, Leave her alone! Uh, no! Uh, Get away from her, she's mine. She's mine! She said my name! She remembers! She's mine! mine. turn to our GMA cover story now and that historic first for the first time ever four black women have been crowned winners of the world's biggest beauty pageant that deserves a huge round of applause Miss Universe from South Africa joining Miss America Miss USA and Miss Teen USA and Miss Lindsay Davis is back with their inspiring story hey Lindsay good morning again to you Cecilia listen this is a far cry from when you look back to 1968 when there was a protest outside of Miss America because from the pageant's inception in 1921, they'd never had so much of even a black finalist. Fast forward to 2019 and the Fab Four, they are making history queens, proving that representation matters. Zozy Tunsi's crowning moment as winner of Miss Universe wasn't just a personal victory, it was history making. In 2019, Four of the major beauty pageants simultaneously awarded the top prize to a black woman. Well, congratulations, first of all. Uh, for the first time in the U.S., all four, talking about Miss America, Miss USA, Miss Teen USA, and Miss Universe, all black everything. Yeah. <laughs> How does it feel to be a part of this history-making moment? <laughs> it was amazing. I think it's such a great move forward as, as the world and as a society to say, look, um, women who were in the past um, never had opportunities to do things like this are now here. I think there are times where I am disappointed because people will sometimes comment on our social media and they'll say, why are we talking about your race? Like, you guys are just four amazing women. I'm like, yes, we're four amazing women. But, but there was a time when we <laughs> literally could not win. In fact, for decades, this moment wasn't even possible. For its first 30 years, black women were not allowed to compete in the Miss America pageant. For young black girls, at what point and what will it take 
uh, for them to feel and identify their skin and their hair, as you mentioned in your speech, as, as beautiful. I mean, from my messages, I don't know what messages you guys have been receiving, but just from mothers who say, my four-year-old daughter was so excited to see you on stage and she kept on screaming, you look like me, she looks like me. And I, I think um, we, it, it is breaking those, um, those boundaries. Curious if you ever had any pressure to wear artificial hair or, or straighten your hair. So I, I wanted to challenge that and to say this hair can be beautiful too because it's how I was born to look. I, I did get pressures too but um, and I, I didn't want to fall into that pressure. I wanted to look like this one your authentic self. my authentic self. The Twitterverse erupting with enthusiasm including congratulatory posts by Oprah Winfrey and Michelle Obama complete with the hashtag black girl magic. Little girls like eight-year-old Milo clearly seeing themselves reflected in these faces. I want your advice on how to become a strong leader. Yes. <laughs> I would say it takes time, but find yourself first because you have to know who you are to be able to lead others. I think we are afraid to take up space. We are afraid to be amazing. And as soon as that fear leaves us and we start building that confidence of, un of being unapologetic. And then I think we can get to that space of having a lot of women leaders who are just fearless. Clap on.